Hi, I'm attorney Ben Schwartz, and today we're going to do a video on the topic of retained surgical instruments. Um, I want to tell you a story. Many years ago, when I was still in law school, I went and I had surgery to remove my wisdom teeth. Um, after the surgery, you know, I started healing. I would swish the salt water, take the medicine that the dentist prescribed for me. And on the one side, the socket where the wisdom tooth came out of healed up nicely. On the other side, it didn't heal. And not only did it not heal, it started tasting bad after a couple weeks and it got worse and it got worse. The problem was that I had this wisdom tooth surgery while I was on break. I think it was spring break in law school. And so as a law student, I didn't have a lot of time. I had to go back to school and I had to hit the books hard and continue studying. Well, after a few weeks of being back in classes, the taste in my mouth got worse and got worse, and it was clear that I had some sort of infection going on. So I went to a dentist in New York City, and he took some x-rays, and he came and he asked me, do you have some jewelry in your jaw or in your mouth? I said, no, I don't have any. I'm not the type of guy that puts jewelry in his mouth. I don't even wear any jewelry. And he said, well, we're gonna run this x-ray series again and see if maybe it was a mistake. So they did the x-rays again, and sure enough, there's a piece of metal in the jaw, down in the socket, and the bone had grown around it. They had to do surgery to get that piece of metal out. They had to scrape down the bone down in the socket in order to get that metal out. And what we think had happened was it was some sort of a clip or some sort of a staple that got left in the surgery site after the surgery site was closed. And so we had some sort of retained surgical instrument. This is something that is of interest to me in my law practice. It's something that I think people don't really talk about, and I would like to talk about it. In fact, I have a picture. This is from the Boston Globe. This is not from one of my cases, but this is a photograph of an x-ray of a gentleman that had surgery in a VA hospital, and you can see the surgeon's implement in the abdominal cavity, in the pelvic cavity on x-ray, and it's a situation where he had surgery, the surgeon left an instrument in the cavity, closed up the patient after the surgery, and for years he had pain and couldn't figure out what was going on. Finally, someone took an x-ray and identified what the problem was, and um, you know, it was a retained surgical implement. So. I want to talk about this. You know, it's not as rare as you would think. According to some estimates, there are between 2,000 and 4,000 incidents of this every year. Now, you have to understand, sometimes things are left in the body intentionally, and sometimes things are left in the body by accident. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you are the victim of a robbery and you sustained a gunshot wound. You may have fragments of the bullet inside your body. When the surgeon goes in to take the bullet out, he may not be able to reach all of the fragments of the bullet. Maybe some fragments of the bullet are close to nerves or other delicate areas and to retrieve the fragments would cause more damage than leaving them in so the surgeon intentionally leaves the bullet fragments in. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about situations where the surgeon do, you know, counts the number of implements that he's using, they do a, a sponge count, they don't properly count the number of implements there in the tray before they close, and they send the patient out of the OR into recovery with an instrument in the body that isn't supposed to be there that was not intentionally left there. That's a type of situation that we see in my law firm and that I myself have had happen to me. Um, it's a situation where, you know, the question comes up, and I've had this question several times, if I've had a surgical implement left in my body and it's not causing problems, do I still have a case? And I would say yes, because if you have a surgical implement in your body and you ask a surgeon, 
hey, is this likely to create problems going forward? You're very well going to find out that even if you're not having problems right now, it's possible, it may be probable that going forward, you're going to start to develop problems as your body develops scar tissue around that foreign object. That foreign object may cause damage to internal organs. And so in a lot of cases where there is a retained surgical instrument, the subsequent treatment is to have it removed, which means you go through another surgery to have it removed. So if this is a situation you have, what you want to do is you want to get to a physician, preferably not the physician that left the instrument in your body, and you want to get to a lawyer, preferably a lawyer that handles medical malpractice cases, including retained surgical in implement or retained surgical instrument cases in the area where you live or where you had the surgery. In other words, in the jurisdiction where you are, you want to make sure that your lawyer is able to handle cases in that jurisdiction. Um, so you want to make sure that they have subject matter expertise as well as geographical expertise, geographical availability for you. Well, it's a good question. It's something that comes up very often in my law practice, something that I don't think many people want to talk about, certainly not in the medical community, but it's a topic that I think people should know about because it happens, and not only does it happen once a year or twice a year in the United States, it happens thousands of times per year according to best estimates. So there you have it. If you have questions on this topic for me, feel free to send me an email. My email address is mail, M-A-I-L, at benschwartz.com. Thanks for watching. If you have topics that you would like me to address in one of these 10 with Ben videos, <clears throat> excuse me, please give me a comment in response to this video or send me an email and let me know what topics you'd like me to talk about. I find all types of topics to be interesting and I know a lot about a broad range of topics. I would like to share that knowledge with people who are interested in learning more about the law and about litigation. Thanks for watching. I'm attorney Ben Schwartz.